we can't talk about MMT without discussing Zimbabwe. Yeah. <laughs> Almost every, every uh, you know, non-believer, uh, as I have these discussions, references Zimbabwe and how they had, you know, hyperinflation and blew up their currency. Can you give us your take on what happened there? And was that, you know, is this a legitimate criticism of an MMT approach to, uh, to running the monetary system? Yeah, no, it's not a criticism of MMT. So what happened, we, we were talking about supply constraints earlier, right? And so MMT is definitely telling us that uh, one way to end up with an inflation problem is to outstrip your economy's productive capacity. So what happened in Zimbabwe? I'm not a scholar of Zimbabwe, but I know the general history uh, surrounding the hyperinflation. Um, look, Robert Mugabe came to power in Zimbabwe. And as a reward to the freedom fighters, to blacks who fought on behalf of, uh, you know, moving him into power, he took land away from white farmers who'd been farming the land for a very long time and redistributed it, understandably, right to the freedom fighters, said, we want to reward you. So what you ended up with was a situation where the black freedom fighters had no experience farming the land. And because of that, you had massive food shortages. And this is a, an economy that's an agricultural economy. Now you can't feed the population. Now you're in a situation where you're trying to print money to import food. And yes, you can get into an inflationary or even hyperinflationary episode, but not because you're trying to run your economy you know, in accordance with the sort of principles of MMT, but because you right. had other problems, political and, um, and supply. Right. This was primarily a, a massive supply shortage. Exactly. 